Okay, so here's a quick video uh, on a couple things that I want you to look at in terms of your parts before we get to the actual videos on the labs. You're going to have in your kits, you're going to have a little switch that looks like this. And it's got three terminals, and you can see I've got my meter that's connected to the middle terminal. It's because the middle terminal here is the common pin to these other two pins. So it's just a switch. If you were to think of, you know, just a regular light switch, you know, and you didn't have this portion here, then, you know, you just have this, and anytime you turn the switch to this position, it connects those two. The only difference with this one here is that it's a two position switch. So when I move the switch to this position, what's that actually doing internally? There's these contacts, just like in a normal single pole switch, there's these contacts that are here. And when you move it to that switch, what it does is it closes those contacts there. So now you've got, you know, power that goes in through here and through there and then out to there. So the middle pin is your common. And then if you were to move this switch to the other side over here, so now you take the switch and you move it to here, then it's making connection between these two terminals. It closes these two terminals and then this one opens. This one becomes open and then this one becomes closed. So I have my meter connected here. I've just got it on continuity. So in this position, I've got the switch all the way to the right and I should get no continuity here. Now if I check over here, I'll get continuity between these two terminals. So then if I sw turn the switch the other way, I no longer have continuity here but I have continuity here. So it's just closing the terminals and your center pin is your connection. Notice that <clears throat> they are, the spacing of the pins, notice the spacing of the pins match exactly for the spacing of your breadboard. So, you know, when you're installing any of your breadboards, you gotta install it, you gotta install it, you know, in this sort of fashion here, right? You can't install it like this, even though it'll fit, but that's all the same potential, so it's not gonna do anything. You turn that this way, this way, you just shorted out those pins. So you gotta make sure that you're installing them this way. <clears throat> so that's one of the switches you're gonna use. You're gonna use two of them for the first lab, and I'm gonna show you in another video how to do that. I wanna talk just briefly about this chip here. So this one that I have in here is this called a 7408 chip. The 7408, and you can tell that it's the 7408 because there's writing on the top, and I think it says, I can't really see it, 74, and it may see, may, may see like NS or NA or something like that, and then it says 08, so really what you're looking at is 7408, and that would be an AND gate. And, of course, the AND gate we know, you know, looks like this. And if you look at your pinout sheet, which is in content uh, in labs, and it'll say IC chip layout. Um, you'll find the pinouts for these. And if we look at this chip here, I've got this one positioned. Notice how I've got it positioned across the bridge over here. So it's positioned this way. And the reason is because the pins on this side have to be isolated from the pins on this side here. So if you look at this chip and you look at the pinout, uh, just sort of draw it a little bit bigger. You've got your pins configured. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So that's pin fourteen. That's pin one. That's pin seven. That's pin eight. Okay, so when you're doing these, these chips need to be powered. And ideally, they want to be powered with, uh, this one will say VCC in. And ideally, it wants to have a positive 14 volts DC on this pin. And then this one here needs to go to uh, the ground potential or the negative. Um, and then the chip is powered, and then it's going to work. And if we look at pins, if you look at your pin out, it shows that 
pin one is an input. Pin two is an input that goes into an AND gate. Pin three is an output that goes to there. And then there's four of these uh, in this chip itself. So pin four, pin five, oops, move that up there, pin four, pin five, and then pin six is an output. And then pin uh, eight, pin nine, those are both inputs, and then pin 10 is an output, and then pin 11, pin 12, and then pin 13. So you can see that within this one chip, we have four, we have four different gates. So when you're positioning this chip, you'll notice that there is a little dent, it looks like a half moon dent over here like this that always has to be positioned to the left. That tells us that these pins run this way. So the pin directly below that little uh, half moon divot is pin one, directly above it is pin 14. Uh, in my next video, uh, I'm gonna show you how to make a power supply. And then the video after that, I'm gonna show you how to assemble this circuit. And this is a, an AND uh, gate circuit. And it's got a couple LEDs here. So we're gonna have one input uh, LED for pin one, one input LED for pin two, and an output for pin three going to an LED. So we can see that we're getting power through the entire circuit. Uh, so in that video, I'll show you how to assemble that. Again, just make sure that your position is correct. Make sure that you're using the right gate number and uh, make sure that your switches are in the right position going this way. And, you know, I'll, I'll take some still shots of this as well as doing a video so you guys can see uh, more clearly what's going on.